So welcome back uh, to this um, episode on Bootstrap. And uh, this is actually lesson two. And uh, lesson two will involve developing an e-commerce user interface. Um, so we're going to have some fun interacting or trying to ensure that we have the user interface of an e-commerce. And uh, if you go online, you'll be able to interact with a lot of uh, e-commerce platforms. Um, and of course, you'll end up getting that the user interfaces are different. So we are going to use an approach or to get an approach um, <clears throat> based on, uh, if, you, if you go, for example, there's what you call like Oraimo, it's kind of an e-commerce platform where you can buy uh, Oraimo products, you can actually see the navigational bar, the data deals, product support, total new. On the other hand, we are also able to see that you are able to sign in. That means you, so you can create your own profiles. You have the, like cards where you can add some items to the card. You also have the search. So if you look at this Oraimo, we have the upper part, which comprises of the navigational bar. And uh, this is a, just an example. When you visit, for example, Jumia, Jumia is another online or an e-commerce platform where you can buy your products. If you look at it, this is actually how it's displayed. You can go to another one like Filmall. Uh, you can also have, uh, it's another e-commerce uh, platform where you can still make some purchasing. Um, we also have another one. I don't know for the carry for probably it's also another one or couple. Yeah, this is another uh, platform where you can make some purchases. Uh, so when you talk about an e-commerce platform, is of course a platform that allow users to make their own uh, deals by purchasing different products. But we have an interface. There are a lot of functionalities that must take place. Uh, to ensure that an, uh, an e-commerce platform works as perfectly as it should. But for our scenario here, we want just to create a user interface. So the first page. So how can we arrive at the first, the first page? So if you look at, for example, we have this, which is a killer or If you scroll it down, you'll be able to see some products. You'll be able to see some of these items. Um, You'll be able to see some of this, yeah. So you can actually click on an item, you can add to cart, and then you can proceed to checkout, and then you make your payments, and that's it. A lot of functionalities, as I said, is actually involved in as far as ensuring that um, the e-commerce works. And for our scenario here, we are just going to have um, a platform. In this scenario, I have... Uh, I want to call it shopping site, and then of course in line to Oraimo, or we can have a different uh, platform. And uh, of course, going through this platform, we can check because I was trying to also borrow some images from Oraimo so that we can have something similar to that. So if you look at um, the platforms here, and uh, if you look at my project folder, because here already I have my project folder, it is actually called shopping site Raimo. If I open, then I don't have any, any file. So it's a shopping site, and I'm just having that name as Raimo. But you can still make us either a shopping site, and then you talk about clothing. So the idea and the concept is of paramount importance. Uh, but because we'll borrow some images from Raimo and try and uh, make our own platform, then that is why I have that name. So in the first place, I need to have a folder called images. And uh, through these images, we will have Oraimo images. Another part is um, I'm going to use CSS. So this is actually like a cross combination of CSS and um, CSS and Bootstrap. But majorly, this is actually like a Bootstrap project. But as long as we're using Bootstrap, we can still embed some HTML and not that uh, some CSS. 
So we can have purely CSS, and then we can also have or use Bootstrap CSS. Remember, um, Bootstrap is actually a front-end framework. It's a front-end framework which comprises of the characteristics of the CSS, the HTML, and the JavaScript. So in this particular scenario, we will also end up having some, uh, probably I can also have some, I can talk of the JS, that is of course to have the query files, and of course the JavaScript files, and uh, so yes, my project I think is okay, but remember we still need to, we will actually download some bootstrap CSS. So now when you go to your project file here, so I want to take you like a step-by-step, -step, right? And probably we may end up having part one and part two of this, uh, of this project. So number one, I'm going to right click, new file, file, and then I'm going to have this as the first file, which is index.html. I just want to have one page because we are dealing with the user interface. We want to bring the user interface. So the first thing that you do here is just to generate the HTML. And then probably you can call it a shopping, shopping site. And then let me put something like that. Then we call it Forimo. We call it Forimo, or you can call it any name. So I just want to, because you're going to borrow some images from Forimo. Now, from this part, <clears throat> we want also to make use of the CSS. I want to come to the CSS, right click, open new file, and then this is just the normal CSS. I'm going to save, let me call it main.js. Main.js. So if you look at the CSS part here, we have main, not, not JS, but CSS. So I'm going to change. Yeah, so we have main dot uh, CSS. And then here we have our file. So going forward, um, if you look at this, probably I just want to make, sometimes you have, for example, the meta, you have uh, the character. Sometimes this does not come automatically, so you have to, to write the UTF-8. Uh, then again, we also have another meta. Yeah, so that is meta eight. So, uh, so, the, so I want to have meta. So I want to have the name. Now, what I'm trying to do here, if I open VS Code, uh, Visual Studio Code, And then I just open a file. Let me just open a file, or even let me just get rid of this file here. So when you come to VS Code, and then you type like that, you'll be able to get this. If you click at it, it's going to bring you to this. So I want to copy this. This is what I'm targeting. I want to copy this, copy. And uh, again, there's also another one called Meta. And then you can have um, HTT here, HTTP equi. And then I need to have X, UA. And then we have compatible. And content. Then I have IE. Probably you have the page. Yeah, so let me just have this. And then let me bring it to this part. Yeah, something like that. But most of the time you find that, you see the first one is giving you like the lang an English language or the language. The other one is just for the viewport. The other is for the compatibility. Like for example, the Internet Explorer, page, so you can actually opt to have this or you opt to not to have. But at the end of the day, these are some of the things that might appear on your 
on your side. So let me just, so we have the shopping site or IMO, and then now we want to come um, to the, to, to of course, adding the, the styling and of course, adding the scripts. So the first thing is I want to capture the link. So the first link is we have CSS, we have main.css. Now, where is this coming from? CSS main CSS. We have this one, CSS main CSS. So remember I said that it's actually going to be a cross combination of the bootstrap CSS and just the normal CSS. So for the bootstrap CSS, we're going to download and we're going to base it on the bootstrap file. So we have these versions, the three, the four, the five, but we're going to base it on the 5.0.2. So from this point, um, because I've added the CSS, I want to come down here and have another link. So this link is going to serve uh, for, it's going to give us for the, the font awesome. So for the font awesome, what I will go and I will just go back to either one of the, and just type font awesome, font awesome CDN, font awesome CDN and press enter. So I have this font awesome CDN. Then I will come here to font awesome libraries. I will click there and then I can choose to select the first one. You see the first one, this one. So I'll click here, it will tell me copy it. Then I will come to this part and then I will paste it here. I will paste it there. So you'll find that at the end of the day, we have this all .min CSS. <clears throat> Sometimes you can get rid of uh, this other stuff, this something here. Something not written correctly. So we have, we have to close it. So there's an issue here, so href. Let me just copy it again. Paste it there, click. Yeah, then we have this one. So we have this problem B. So we have integrity. It's going to be on the refresher. So we have the link, rel styling sheet. Okay, let me just get rid of this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what you can do, already this has come with its own. You see, if you look at uh, this part here, I think, okay, it has its own, but let me just paste it and see what happens. So let me paste it the way it is, yeah. So it has come with its own link. So for us, we were trying to place it. Then the final thing is now to apply the bootstrap. So we have the bootstrap CSS, bootstrap CSS. So you can just do like that. And then uh, this one, remember this was for the fourth or some. So let me just have some comments. Font awesome link is there. I'm giving it some comments. Or you can call it font awesome CDN so that you can know what is happening. Font awesome CDN. So this is uh, not even that. But let me come below here. Yes. And then this, of course, the, the normal CSS where you can have here. So um, coming back down to the bootstrap. Uh, CSS. So what you have to do is just go back to the file and then uh, you can just click on that. Or even let me just type Google to give you this part. Then types like bootstrap. Remember I talked about bootstrap file. So I'll just type bootstrap. Bootstrap file. So we have this bootstrap file. Then from here, I can just select the first one, click on introduction 5.0. And then I can come to, <clears throat> instead of that, I can download directly. So I can come to this link, click on download. 
it's going to take me to this part and I, I want the CSS and JSS combined. So I will click download. So it will download. Now, if you look at it, it has downloaded this file. So let me copy. And then let's take to where we can view. So we have our project here. So let me paste it here. So if you look at this, we have this. This is our project. So I'm going to press uh, extract. So I'm going to do extract here. And automatically, I'm going to get this. So for this one, I can I can get rid of. So I can get rid of. So I can go there and let me cut and take it somewhere. Let me even go back to software. Let me paste it here. But now the most important thing is our project here. If you look at it, we already have this bootstrap hyphen 5.0.2 hyphen distribution. Distribution. If you open from this perspective, yeah, if you look at it, we have this. Now, so how can we how can we place it here? So here we we'll just come on top of link. Because it's a CSS, you need to have that link. And then here on the href, on the href. Now, if you look at it, we have this uh, bootstrap here. Let me get rid of that. We have this bootstrap. So if you just expand it and come to CSS, you'll be able to get a lot of bootstrap, uh, CSS and JS in bootstrap format. So here I'm going to type up. I'm just going to have a bootstrap, so I'm going to have this name here. So let me rename so that I can copy the whole name. And then I can just come and paste it here. From there, I can put forward slash CSS. Forward slash, so remember it is bootstrap. It's bootstrap, then come to CSS. And then from there, we are looking for the bootstrap mean CSS. So if you look at down here, we are talking about bootstrap.min.css. So bootstrap, which is actually this one down here, we have bootstrap, this one, right? Click rename. So this is what I'm interested at because this is the starting of all those. So what we will do, and if you look at it, we have this information. So it's kind of licensed because we downloaded, but what less about that. So just come here and place like that. So with this one, you have the bootstrap, which of course is a combination of both the CSS and the JS. And then of course, finally you have, uh, remember this one up here is what we call the custom, custom CSS. It's like the custom CSS custom CSS. So you have the custom CSS, you have the font of some CDN, you have the bootstrap CSS, and that's it. So now you are set to go. We are set to go, we are bound to go. And now the next thing for us to do is, the next thing for us to do now is to start with the project. So what kind of project are we working on? Remember this is a project that is going to be like a step-by-step -step guide uh, to let you understand. So anytime, um, if you look at these projects, for example, if I go back to uh, this part, where it was this one, like for example, the Jumia, you see one thing stood up. If I go back to, was it Raimo? Raimo, yeah, this part. You see there's this, if I kind of kind of find for, I mean, responsible to try and fix them and see whether this is responsive. If you look at it, you can still click on it. And uh, this is actually kind of a responsive. So these are some of the things that we want to take care of. So remember this one is going to be like a project, which is of course going to be one part one, part two, it can also go to part three. But it is based on the main idea here is to use Bootstrap, both Bootstrap CSS and 
uh, the custom CSS. So having defined this part here, it's right time for us to start with the flow. So the first thing is I need to have the navigation. I need to have the navigation. So with the help of uh, with the help of um, the, the the comments, I think it was fair if I place the comments so that it can help us. So for the navigation, we are looking at the first part. For example, if you look at this part, the darker side here, and if I go to like do the SM snipping tool capture that and then capture this. You see, we have this part. This is actually what you call the navigation. This is what you call the navigation. This is what you call the navigation. So if you go back to the code, if you go back to the code, we're going to use some, uh, some, I mean, some, some bootstrap CSS, just to ensure that we are on the right place. So just to ensure that we are using some correct bootstraps CSS. So for example, we talked about uh, a class and you'll find that with a class, when it comes to the, uh, to the navigation or to the bootstraps, navbar, we have navbar as a class, which is actually being recognized and this defines a navigational bar. Remember, we talked about this. It defines what you call a navigational bar. So as a class, as a bootstrap class, not as a CSS or as a custom CSS. As a bootstrap class, this actually defines a navigational, navigational bar. Now, we also have the nav bar. I know probably I've taken you through this before. So I'm going to have like expand LG. LG is what determines uh, the screen sizes. So for a screen which is beyond, or a, a, is either 1200 pixels or beyond, LG is just there to take care of. We also have something else for navbar uh, light. This is actually sets the light color scheme for the navbar because we want to have the light skin color or we want to have the light color. Uh, so navbar light. So navbar is one that defines an application bar, and then the light is what de determines the color. We want to have the background as white, so BG white. So this sets the background color of the navbar to white. You can change to white, you can change to green, you can change to whatever thing you, you want. And then the final thing that I feel like has use is another um is another py. Uh, py for padding. So this actually adds padding. So p for padding, and then y is the y axis. So it means that I need a padding running from top to bottom. So this is padding, and then this is the y axis. So having said that, I want to involve all of them here. So I'm going to have navbar space. We are going to have navbar hyphen expand, hyphen LG. We want to have navbar, uh, hyphen light. And then the final one, we want to have PY hyphen four. So if you look at the way it's aligned, the way it's aligned, and probably I can just do what? Fixed, fixed it up for example, okay. Before you come to fix the top, fix top means that you want to ensure that it, it remains at the top whenever you're scrolling them, the file. So let me just get rid of this. So these are what you call the bootstrap, bootstraps classes. So if I save my work and right click and open in browser, let's see how it's happening. So nothing actually happens for now, but what happens if we have some data in between? So, so if you look at this, uh, now it's blank, but remember we had some input here. 
if I assume that I take this information here, just to place it in the field there. And this time around, I open the browser. So you see, I'm getting some information there. Um, but of course, uh, sorry for this. But of course, this information is just for like one line. But there's this light color. If I do light and talk of green, let's see what happened. File, save, right click, then browser. So already is not yet defined, but of course we'll come back to that. So let's just leave it at light. And I think there's something we are missing. Yeah, there's this for BG. For BG, so I need to have it here. So background white, let me take to background red and see what happens. So again, nothing changes. So let's go back to the code and get rid of this. And then of course, I want to have the white because based on um, based on the way I want, I want it to have like a white, white background. Then of course, I can also have something here like fixed, fixed top, fixed, fixed top. So we have this bootstrap classes. Navbar, navbar expand, hyphen LG, navbar hyphen light, uh, BG hyphen white. We have the PY4, which of course has the padding uh, Y axis to four pixels. And then we have the fixed top. Now from this point, <clears throat> we are coming down to uh, another, because we expect to have some anchor. You see, we expect to have some uh, this anchor. So just come and talk about h -width. Now, this is like links. This is like links. So what you're going to do for the first part, it's like I want to form, it's like I want to form uh, or to, to prepare like a logo. You see, you must also have a section for a logo. You must also have a section for a logo. And if you only to have a section for a logo, then you have to separate. You can have a different div or a different row for the logo, and then you have a different row for the navigational links. And then all of them, you just align horizontally. So for my case here, I have um, <clears throat> href. And probably for this H where you're supposed to take us, probably I can have something like, let it take me to index.html. But in this scenario, I want to apply some bootstrap classes. I want to apply some bootstrap classes. So number one, you know that when it comes to the, to the brand and the logo, we have what you call the navbar brand. And I know that uh, we talked about this in our previous, now, I want the display to be flex. That is the display to be flex. I want to justify, justify hyphen content. Just put between. This is justify content, like justify or text align, justify, text align center, text align right, left. So in Bootstrap classes, we're using justify content between. Now, you can also come and say align items and then you do center. And then you order now the large sizes. I don't want to have it at zero. So order hyphen LG hyphen zero. Now from here, I want just to show an image. So I'll have an image. And this image, we are going to have one image. So let me go to Orimo. And uh, I don't know, let me have just a, a logo. Let me assume that I'm getting a logo from Orimo. And uh, let me have Orimo logo. Or even we can talk of, yeah, you can go to Orimo logo, you can go to
So we can have just a logo. Let me just get this. Just a logo. Logo is true. I don't need to work a lot. Okay, okay let's go with this. Okay, let me take this logo, save images. Uh, this time round, I just want to save this image and um, downloads. So let me call it logo. But for this logo, I want to remove the background color. So how do I do, how do I go about? No, 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 this one. Let me capture something and see. Okay, let me call it, let me take this one and click. Save image as. I will go and replace that logo. And then I will use this tool called remove background from image. And then I'll click remove background from image. I will upload image. I will go to downloads, click logo, click open. So this is a, so I'm assuming that this is just a, you know, then download. So once you download, it's going to be previewed without a background. So I'm going to rename it. So first thing, I'm going to delete the previous one, and then I'm going to rename this one. Let me call it logo. And then I'm going to copy this, cut. Then I will go to my project. So I'll go to desktop. I'll go to shopping site, Rhino. Then I'll come to images and then paste it here. So I have this logo. When you go back to the code, you have these images folder. Click on that, you'll be able to see logo.png. So this logo.png is what we're going to bring it here. So the first question is, where is this logo? This logo is in, located in a folder called images. Forward slash uh, logo.png. And then file, then click save. File, click save. So this time around, you want to test the visibility of our logo. So if I run open in browser, now you can see that we have our logo here. Now, remember, we've not applied any CSS. So sometimes you can also be required to have this alt, but you see this is like, a, you can just say top of site icon, which is a, just a logo, but make sure that if it's a real project or an actual project, then you have to use their own logo. Uh, from there, probably I can also use like span. <clears throat> and uh, for this span, I can call this for Rhino. So I want to have a text beside the word, beside the logo. So for this one, I'm going to apply some class. So these classes, I'm going just to use uh, any class, so I'm going to just say, say uh, text. So class names, just use the way you want, especially in line to what you need. Okay, so when it comes to aligning your class names make sure that it aligns with almost what you want to use for example i want to change this text to uppercase so text uppercase and then you can have a w uh, you can have, let's say, lighter, and then you can say ms hyphen 2. Now, if you look at the explanation, or if you look at uh, the way these classes are defined, the classes are actually more than, uh, it, it depends, because we have a lot of classes, especially when it comes to bootstrap. When you talk of uh, the FS, or you talk of text uppercase. Text uppercase, of course, that converts the text into uppercase. It has already some built-in functions to do that. And when it comes to the FW, FW hyphen lighter, 
in comes to FW, I can lighter. This of course, more of the coloring again. We have the MS, if you remember, we have what you call the grid or the bootstrap grid classes. MS was actually one of the uh, grid classes that if the screen size is lesser than or less than um, 768, then uh, it should actually uh, do like that or just <clears throat> uh takes up some comment uh some some columns in bootstrap but these are just but purely bootstrap bootstrap um css so if for example i save my file i just want to see and now look at that we have orion now what happens if i remove this later and then i save it and then again yeah, you see the way it is so when you are using FW lighter, it's like you're making it a little bit more lighter. You're making it a little bit more lighter. So the size of the image we're going to readjust, but if you look at it, um, we have that. So from this point, because this is actually like the first part of our project, we are going to have the navigation, like a working navigational uh, button, especially ones for the links, one for the logo and everything. So once you're through with this, just come down here. But remember again, there was something, remember we opened, uh, we never closed it. So there was this, we never closed it. So now this time round, if you go up in browser, now it can, becomes like that. Now, coming down here, we want to have a diff now because we expect to have some links. If you look at uh, the, this Oraimo, we have all daily deals, products, support, what a new. So if I go back to my file here, um, I need to have this diff. So for the first diff, I'm going to have a class. For this class, let me call it, I'm giving now the order. So this time round, I'm giving that, but this time round, I'm giving a G2. I'm giving a G2. By the way, for this particular class, what does it mean when you talk of um, order LG1, order LG2, order LG3? You see, when you talk about order LG2 or LG1, these are the orders, or it's actually the order of the number content to the left, especially when it comes to the larger screens. So you want to order the navigational bar contents to the left. That is what I mean. Now, from there, we need to also look at something else. Which other class can we? There's also what we call nav, um, hmm, what nav buttons. Nav buttons. Now, if you go to the nav buttons, this is so direct because you're looking at the navigational buttons. You're looking at the navigational buttons. So it becomes so direct for you to relate because BTN, that is the styles. BTN actually styles a button. So when you talk about nav buttons, then automatically BTNS, then that becomes uh, one point. So from here, so let me just do it more quick. So we have buttons. And then for the button, I want to have uh, type, of course, it is a button. This we know. <clears throat> then we have the class. I want to have the button position relative. So it's like a direct or indirect translation of what we have in CSS. CSS, we can say position relative. Here we are talking about BTN, hyphen position, hyphen relative. Then from here, I want to have I, and then from here, I'm going to use the font of some reason. Remember, we, we, we imported a link for the font of some, which is actually this one. So at this point, we are going to have the font of some. So let me just use like far, or if you go to the CDN, you can go to font of some. Font awesome icons. Come to font awesome icons. 
And then from here, just come and take like a shopping, shopping cart. Let's see, shopping cart, shopping cart. Yeah, like this. So I'm going to copy this. So I can even copy the entire line. But the actual name is here. Then I'll bring it and place it here. Then from there, and we're going to have it like that. So let me save it. Let's click open in browser. Now look at this. This is the cut. This is the cut. But you can still have a different variety, a different uh, way. So if you come back, you can still have this one. It depends on what you want. So this one can tell you like you need to. So these are one for the arrow. So if you come and copy this, down here, come and paste it like that. Save it, right click, open in browser. Yeah. So it is the same, same, same cut. So that is for the cut. <clears throat> now, and then below the uh, below the button that is below the cut, I want to have a span. So for this span, remember we've not used the just this common CSS. So I want to finish first of all. So we have button position relative, but this time around, I don't want to have position. Uh, I want to have position, position, then absolute, absolute. Position absolute. Now I don't have a. I don't want to have a space. So at the top it is zero. I want it to start in negative hundred. Then let's have it at the middle. You remember that the line height. Translate hyphen middle. I need to have the badge. I need to have the background color primary. Primary. Yeah. So if you go as far uh, by this, when you talk of um, this, uh, this, uh, this, this bootstrap classes, you see, the only way to understand this is just by kind of making use of them and at least see what is happening. You see, once you apply, you see what is happening. So for my case, uh, let me have something like, now it's something I want you to see. Let me have like 10, let me have like 10. I'm giving 10 and click, opening browser. Now, uh, nothing is happening, but let me will come. So I want you to have something like 10 indicated up there that probably some 10 items have been added to the cart, although we must have the functionality part of it. Remember what we are doing is only the user interface. It's only the user interface. So we don't mind a lot with the functionality part of it. But once you get the user interface, then the functionality part of it comes in. And that is the beauty of using Bootstrap. That is the beauty of using Bootstrap. Now from here, I'm going to have another button. So let's assume that these are the buttons that are okay. And these buttons actually, this is what I'm talking about. When I talk of these buttons, you see the three buttons here, the three buttons on the left part. We have these buttons here. These are the buttons that I'm talking about. So one we have for the cut, then we go for the search, and then we end up at the profile. So let's have another another button. Let's have another button. So this time round, so we have like the type is button, but the class I want to have BTN position relative. Uh, coming down here, I want to have this, and then uh, from here, I'm going to have the, okay, I'm going to have the class, yeah, I class, 
And then let me just go directly because um, probably activity is at. Yeah. And then you can still copy the same thing here. Half it there, and this time down, I'm going to paste it here. So we will actually see the impact of this. So we have the position absolute of zero, the same thing. And then uh, from there, I want the last button. So for this button, the class type, I mean the class, the type, type is button. And then of course the class, I want to have all of them to be in the same UTN position relative. And then from here, I will have this, and then I'll talk of class. And then let's see, this one is for the first search. So you only consider the last name, the papa, that is what takes up the day. So if you look at this, uh, okay, so we have the three buttons covered under the same class, I mean, under the same division. So if I go to save, right click, open in browser, look at this. So you see we have the search, we have like, it's like the wish list of the like, and then you have that. Then from here, we want now to build, so remember what I've done here, uh, apart from, so let me have like this one is the logo. So I'm giving like that. This one has the buttons. And then have like that. And then now we are coming for the navigational links. You see, we have not created the navigational, navigational links. So here, as long as I'm able to have this, you will be required to apply the CSS letter. <clears throat> That's why we have a custom CSS and we have the bootstrap, the bootstrap CSS. So for this one, I'm going to have another button. So we are outside that deep. So on this one, we need to have a class. Now you remember we have what you call the collapse. And then we have the nav bar, nav bar collapse. We have the order, so like LG2. So remember, this is exactly how you order your navigational contents or the nav bar contents. So for this one, you can have something like one. And then uh, because I need an ID here, this is going to help us on uh, on the external CSS, so let me call it uh, menu. So for this one, it's not a bootstrap, but this one we're going to have a reference under this file. So let's come here. So on the button part, we're going to have the UL. And then on the UL, we're going to have a class. This class, we're going to call it navbar. Uh, I can now. Nav now is for specific, specifically the links. Specifically the links. You want to have the maximum width, let it be out, or let it come automatic, auto. Uh, we want to make sure that the text is at the center. The text is at the center. So there's difference between navbar alone and navbar. When you talk of navbar, this contains some styles, or specifically some styles, uh, some styles, specifically some styles related to, you just.
So if you look at uh, this part, we are using most of uh, Padding, uh, but padding axis is two, and then padding y axis is two. So from there, we are going now to have the link. So we'll have a, and uh, through the a, through a, we can now. Um, so we have like href. So from this one. For now, I don't want it to take us anywhere because we don't have an, another page. So it's going to serve as a link. It's just going to serve as a, as a link. So in this scenario, uh, because we're going to have to close there, let me have here a score. But now we want to assign some classes. So I'll have the class and then I'll talk about the nav, nav link. And then I need to convert it into uppercase. And then from there, I want to make the text hyphen dot. Text hyphen dot. So let me save my work, right click, open browser. Now you can see what is happening here. So from here, 
I can have a replica of this. So I can choose now to replicate this. So I can have, that is one, two, three, four. So here you can talk about, probably we want about, about us, or we can talk of a collection. You can talk about um, new arrivals. You can talk about probably uh, best deals. So you can actually have now a combination of this. Uh, you can also have one for, if you feel like, you can also have one for the ones that are popular. Which ones are popular? Are popular. Which ones are popular? So this time round, if you go to your file, uh, sorry, is it that? No. Yeah, so if you go back to your file and save, this time round, click open in browser, you can now see that you have this ones. You can now see you have this in so on, collection, variables, best deals, and then popular. Best deals and then popular. So with this, um, with this, you are actually in a better position because if you look at it, at least our navigational bar is coming up. So let me say that <clears throat> having this button down here, because if you look at it, we have, uh, okay, is there a button? So I have placed everything under button. So I don't think whether we require this button. Let me change, I think there's a new mistake here. So instead of that, I'm going to change it to div. And then down here, I'm going to change this to div. Yeah. So we have the div. And uh, so you have to restructure because at some point, uh, and then there's one thing, there's one thing. You see, for example, before you have the nav bar, immediately after the nav bar, uh, so that we can have this, I need to have, because everything has to be in a container. So this one, I'm going to give a class container. And then I take this one, take it down here. Yeah, so I think this is now what it should. Yeah, so okay, we have it like that. Because you should actually be able to print. So this one must match with what is we have it here. Then like that. So this time round, remember it was giving us in form of uh, like for example, yeah. So if you look at it now, we have all collection here, it was based deals, and then we have the we have the popular. So as part of uh, the first phase, if I go back to the main CSS, main.css, um, let me look for a font. Let me look for a font. And uh, this time around, let me go to Google Fonts. This is how to look for fonts. I'll click Google Fonts. And then on Google Fonts, let me search for Poppins. Poppins. So I'm looking for Poppins. And uh, it's going to give me this part. Poppins, Poppins, Poppins. So let me click Poppins. It's going to give me a lot of this, if you look at it. Now you can deselect what you don't want. For example, you can click, okay. Probably I don't want the others, probably you don't want to. Uh, I'll copy. So if you want, just say get font, let me see. So I want to have to get embedded code. Uh-huh. It's too much. I don't really want this. 
Okay, we'll come back to the fonts later. Uh, but if you look at it, we have our site in place. If I do like that, then we have this. Now, from this point, <clears throat> we can go to the CSS part. First of all, it's like if I do the star and then just the normal um, way, and then I talk of, I want the font family. Or let me go to the body. Let me have the body. So this is just by the normal CSS, the normal CSS. So when you go to the body, so main.css. So on the body, okay. So if I type font family, it's not giving me as I want to run over something here. So I'm going to type body. Then top of font family. First of all, let me check whether it's going to be. It's giving me in black and white. And me in white. So let me check red. I want to test whether we have some connectivity. Okay, nothing's not actually seeing any part. Okay, so let me also I don't know what's not happening here. Now let me have it here because we have a reference of this this is what i wanted to have here let me put it here so we have css then main with css oh it's not it's actually css instead of css you see there the problem is so you must be know how to do it it is css not css so this time round if i do body hope it's going to work and then I have the font, the background color. I don't know why it's not giving me the actual color. If I right click, open the browser. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's taking effects. It's taking effects. So this time round, I want to have, if I do like the font family, the font family, and uh, I call it poppies, or just use sans serif. So it's actually going to change the styling part of my text. Although that is not that important, and especially on the styling part, that is the, the last thing you have to do. But let me just use, uh, uh, there was something called BG primary. It was actually a class name. If you look at, uh, I think we have this BG, BG primary. This is not uh, a, a bootstrap, a bootstrap class, but it's it's a class um, you want to use as part of my external. So assume that I do background. Let me have like background I can color, and then I choose to have white. I choose to have white. First of all, let's choose to have green. I want to see the effects of this. It's giving me white. I click, open browser. Okay, nothing has changed. But if you look at it, I think there's something somewhere here. It's being hidden somewhere. Then sometimes you can also use this. You talk of background and color, and then you use this term var, and then into bracket hyphen hyphen. Let's have like pink color, pink color, and then you talk of yeah shift expose mark important. Now, what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of, because now it's like we're being introduced into some funny, funny stuff. What do we mean? Or what does this tell us?
So when it comes to this, it's actually a, a form of styling. It's actually a form of styling. And uh, I don't know, my internet is down. Check. Let me check my internet. So do like that, open in browser, then you have something like that. So I think what you can do is uh maybe just keep it there as, as part one. I want you to implement up to this particular point. Um up to this particular point. So if you look at it, we have a navigation bar. But our main objective is to do what? Is to develop a user interface. So we want an e-commerce platform user interface. So if you look at what we have already, we are somehow heading there. So we have our own collection, your was based, then we have these icons. And for this, I've purely used the bootstrap. I have not yet implemented, um, I have not yet implemented uh, the CSS part. So the CSS part is still there. And it's important for us to have both sides. So it doesn't mean that if you have Bootstrap alone, you can work with Bootstrap alone. No, you can still work around, around, um, uh, around having the custom CSS alongside the Bootstrap, the Bootstrap CSS. So if you go further, let me just look at uh, probably one or two things. So this is actually going to serve as end of part one, it's going to serve as end of part one. I mean, yeah, especially part one, um, part one. And the, our intention is to develop or developing an e-commerce user interface. And this is part one. So part two, we are going to proceed from there. Thank you and see you in the next uh, episode.